Welcome to this week's The Choice. And this week we are heading northwest to Powder River Outfitters in Montana, a place where we've gone a lot of years. Yeah, I thought maybe we were going to keep talking the whole thing. No? You no. going to keep going? Okay. Hey, so anyways, it's up in Montana. It's cold. It's rifle season. We're going to have fun up there, no? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. They don't need their thermocells on that trip. No, we but we do. Here. We I'm should, telling you right now. have it on? This yes. week's lucky logo is Thompson Center. Thompson Ultimate Rifles. So you need to look for the Thompson Center logo, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. So in the yep. meantime, should Powder we River. Ready? Yep. You know what? What? I love these because these are what guys can call selective hearing. Extraordinaire. Just shut them out, man. Don't have to listen to them. Don't have to do nothing. Fire it's in the hole! I don't care. I really don't. It's like the ultimate. It's the best. I just... So last year, uh, we came out here to Potter River Outfitters and we had a great hunt. Yes, sir! Woo! Look at that! I can't believe it. That is an awesome deer. That, uh, I'm just shook up, man. And uh, when I got told by Ralph and Vicky, that I was gonna be able to make a return trip back, I was really, really excited. And there was nobody else I could think of that I'd rather have on this trip than my good friend, Scott Wool. The exciting thing about this hunt was the fact that we had a combination tag, either whitetail or mule deer. And based on the game we saw while driving into camp, there was no shortage of either. One thing that's remained unchecked on my bucket list for a lot of years was a trip to Montana. Montana is beautiful, Powder River Outfitters, amazing camp, class act. They know what they're doing when it comes to deer hunting. It's so much fun, the camp is so great, the amenities are awesome, the cooking is incredible. You never ever leave with an empty belly. If you do, it's your own fault. We've got the Powder River, we've got the river bottoms, we've got the big cottonwood trees, we've got snow-covered hills in the distance. Game everywhere, grouse, pheasant, mule deer, whitetail. It's unbelievable. This is a hunter's paradise. It is such a target-rich environment. It's more fun than we should be almost allowed to have. I mean, there were deer running everywhere. We saw antelope and whitetail and mule deer. They're I hate to say everywhere, but I think everywhere is a legit term to use. There are deer everywhere. I, I want to say this is probably one of the best kept secrets in the state of Montana. Well, we get into the blind that first night and it's cold. I mean, it is cold. It's sunny, but it's cold. And uh, we were cuddled up nice and close in our ground blind and uh, just waiting to see what the night brought. Well, something I've been wanting to say for a lot of years. Welcome to Montana. I am so excited to be here running with Powder River Outfitters. It's November 15th, it's cold, single digits. Freddie and I left uh, Illinois yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon. Drove straight through all night, ran into some snow, actually had to pull over a few times so the snow plows could catch up. All that's behind us. We got to camp, they told us get ready and we're gonna get out. There's lots of deer here and I've seen that already. I'm excited to be with Freddie, we always have a lot of fun. I'm in Montana. What else can I say? It didn't take long till the deer started making their way out of the river bottom right back into the alfalfa field we were sitting on. We've got deer all the way around us. We got mule deer to our far left. We have whitetails feeding in front of them. I couldn't tell you how many does and small bucks that we had come into that field that first night, but it's cold. And Travis knew that those deer were gonna be on the food source. You know, no different than late season. It's only mid-November, smack dab in the middle of the rut. But it's cold, it's cold, cold here. And those deer were definitely on the alfalfa. They were filtering out of that river bottom right to the alfalfa field about 200 yards in front of us. The night was just about to get good. It was amazing. There was deer on three sides of us whitetail, mule deer, and we knew it was going to be a good sit. A cold sit, but a good sit. After about an hour of watching a lot of does and yearlings, first few bucks started to filter into the field. I told Scott, I said, here comes a nice buck, man. He's a nice 10. Well, he came into the field and he started feeding around and he stayed off to our right side for quite a bit. And uh, we got a real good look at him and we decided that it was a real nice deer, real nice Powder River 10 point. 
As the buck made his way into the field, I was surprised that he didn't pay much attention to the does. The rut is pretty much in full swing out here, but he was just worried about eating. Well, he started feeding around and he got out in front of us and about 140 yards, he turned broadside and all of a sudden, about the time he turned, there were a bunch of does that were right behind him. So we had to wait. You can't take that shot with them deer behind him, especially during a rifle hunt. There's that nervous anticipation, thinking, oh, we blew our chance, we blew our chance. But uh, he finally stepped into clear and the OTC did its job. since I've been able to make this walk. I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it with my good pal, Freddy. We have one tag filled, one tag left to be put on a deer. I think I just figured out where I'm gonna move. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? Holy cow. Hey, Ralph and Vicki, I wanna thank you guys. Without you, I wouldn't be making this walk right now. Totally appreciate it. Adrenaline's starting to wear off a little bit, starting to get cold, getting cold. Oh yeah, he looks nice, Freddy. Oh yeah. Look at the neck on this guy. Holy cow. The OTC Venture did the job. Beautiful 10 point. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Great representative of what uh, Potter River has to offer. Like I said earlier, white tail or mule deer on this hunt. We've seen both. Beautiful, I can't get over the size of the neck on this guy. Again, Freddie, we have a good time every time we get together. Got us a beautiful Powder River whitetail. Been wanting to come to Montana for a long time, finally made it, and uh, a great hunt. Ralph and Vicki, thanks again. Powder River Outfitters, and last but not least, my man Freddie Lagos. You're up now, buddy, and you got the whole week to get her done. As we're sitting there, we had a couple nice bucks come in. We had one really nice eight pointer that came in who was just all broke off. His main beam was broke right in front of his G3. He had really good long main beams. He had his G3 broke off on his left side. And just in front of his G3 on his right side, he had his main beam snapped clean off. So he was obviously a scrapper. He'd be a good deer if he wasn't all broke up. I hate to put a tag on that buck with them being all broke like that, man. You know better than me being picky, but his main beam is snapped off on the one side. That deer would have had everything. I would have let the old TC open up on him, but a little bit early yet and not quite the deer I was looking to put my Powder River tag on. The fields are filling up with deer. We've been in the blind, our American. 
first step here probably four hours. I see two little spike bucks hammering each other right there. <laughs> this place is awesome. Powder River Outfitters brought us Montana right smack dab in the middle of November. There's bucks pushing does. There's bucks pushing bucks. There's does pushing does. It's awesome. There's deer everywhere. And then about two o'clock, we looked up and here come deer again. It was like somebody opened the floodgates. The alfalfa fields, everywhere that we could see, we had alfalfa fields around us. Every alfalfa field was filling up with deer. And I mean, hundreds of deer. And that is not a lie. And it, it's, <laughs> it's not propaganda. I mean, there were hundreds of deer within our eyesight and there were deer coming out every two or three minutes. There were more deer stepping into the field. Well, the field in front of us slowly filled up with does. We had mule deer, we had whitetail. We had a group of antelope come down off the hillside behind us and feed out into the alfalfa for a little bit. It was a really, really awesome night. I mean, there was some rut activity going on. There was some chasing going on. There were some bucks checking does. There were a lot of does in the field. And we kind of had that feeling. It was just a matter of time until a good buck came into the field. Well, as they usually do, those good bucks usually wait till the last little bit of daylight to come out. And we looked over and from the same way that the antelope came down into the field, we had a really nice eight pointer come down the hill behind us. Yeah, he's a nice eight. He actually came from behind the ground blind, which is not what we were expecting at all. It's right smack dab in the middle of November. You figured these deer would have nothing but the rut on their mind, but this cold weather, all they were worried about was that food source. And I put the Zeiss binos on him and I was looking at that deer and he was a good buck. He was a good eight and something that I was really, really proud and hoping to take home with me. So I told Scott, I said, yep, we're gonna try and lay the hammer down on this buck as soon as he gives us a shot. I laid my cheek on the stock of that TC and let out a big breath. That was a big mistake on my part because I completely fogged up my scope. And as I was reaching up to get that scope cleared off and I went back around into the trigger of the gun, the cuff of my jacket actually touched the gun off. The scope's all fogged up. Man. So I told Scott, I said, yep, we're gonna try and lay the hammer down on this buck. I let out a big breath. That was a big mistake on my part because I completely fogged up my scope. And as I was reaching up to get that scope cleared off and I went back around into the trigger of the gun, the cuff of my jacket actually touched the gun off. The scope's all fogged up. Man. Sending a warning shot into the field, deer scattering everywhere. Well, now we go into panic mode. That buck went running and he went about 75 yards. He got up on a little bit of a levee that was in front of us and I asked Scott if he was on him there. He said no. And he decided that he was gonna go off the levee and he was gonna go about another 25 yards and he turned broadside. And he had to stop and turn around to take that one last look to try and figure out what was going on. And it was a bad idea for him. No fog this time. <laughs> and I let the TC eat and it flopped him right where he stood. There was no tracking job involved with that buck. And we had our second tag here at Powder River Outfitters punched and on a nice eight point deer. Oh, my goodness. I just laid the hammer on a big Powder River eight pointer, baby. Yes, sir, give me love. Ooh. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. We got an awesome, awesome Powder River eight pointer laying right there in the alfalfa field. And let me tell you, tonight may be one of the best nights deer hunting I think I've ever had in my life. I got to burn two shells again this year and laid it down on the second one. Let's get over here to him. He's right here at the end of the levee. The TC Venture 300 Win Mag, baby. 
Way to womp on him. This place is awesome. <laughs> He is done. He is done. Oh, and look, look at that. <laughs> look at that eight pointer. <sighs> what an awesome buck. We are up here in Southeast Montana, Broadus, Montana with Powder River Outfitters. And this place is awesome. We got a great eight pointer. He has got really good long main beams. He's good and he's tall. And he is going home back to Illinois. And I think I might know a good taxidermist. So I think I know somebody that might be able to help me out with some taxidermy. <laughs> oh man, this guy, he is just, Awesome, awesome, awesome. I gotta say thanks to Ralph and Vicky, of course, for the opportunities. Oh, everybody here at Powder River Outfitters for making it another awesome hunt. Scotty, sitting there behind the camera, freezing with me the last several days. And of course, the good Lord above for giving me the blessing of an opportunity at another one of his awesome, awesome creations. Look at him, brother man. This is what extreme winters do, look at that. His ear tips on both sides have been froze off. That side and a lot of it on that side, look at that. And that's just from last winter. You know, all of us here in the Midwest and in the Plain States, we had a horrible, horribly, extremely cold winter and you can see the toll it took on him, but uh, he's still here and he's going back home to Illinois, baby. Man, what an awesome, awesome Powder River eight pointer. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. That's what it's all about, freezing your butts off and, and Powder River Outfitters, you guys take care of our boys every year. That's what it's all about is freezing your butts off? Well, yeah, it's fun. They had a great time. They, you know, it's they. It's cold. Oh, you asked them, they'd probably tell you those first few days was miserable. No, they loved it. I knew. You it. think so? Yeah. Mm, yeah, no. Freddie's built for the Arctic. He is, you're yes, right. I yeah. knew it. Kind of, now that he's got his beard back, it's yeah. much better. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you happen to see this week's lucky logo, which was TC, Thompson Center. Ultimate Rifles. You need to log on to choicetv.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win a brand new TC, plus some other great things. That's it. Yeah. Thanks for making your choice. The choice. Now we'll here's the deal. Next week. Guys, you got to get these. You can just shut them out. It's like the ultimate. It's better than a man cave because you could look at them and you could be like, so Vic, what, 